Okay, we'll uh, we'll jump right into this here. So this is the forty dollar Playmore camper that I bought, and used my Toyota 4Runner to uh, haul it off the backyard of this man's this man's backyard. And I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the tires were about a third of the way, just kind of buried in dirt down there. And um, this is the condition. This is the condition I was in when I hauled it off, and this is kind of what it looked like um, before doing anything. So I, I towed it out of his backyard. That's me standing there, a younger me. I towed it out of his backyard and got it to a parking lot, nearby parking lot, and um, had my wife snap up before photo. And this is the other side of it. So uh, kind of just straight up ugly, nothing pretty about it. This is the inside and what it looked like. Uh, it was just absolutely disgusting. You could see the daylight coming through the floor here. And you could see uh, they're taping Mountain Dew boxes and everything else. It it looked like it had been repaired from water damage at some point, but still had a lot of water damage going on. Just absolutely disgusting and smelly, everything else you could imagine. So um, I get it into my parents' backyard and park it. And this is some information here about the manufacturer that I, I just snapped a picture real quick. And I'm taking some more before pictures here, um, just to kind of give you an idea. This is the front of the camper. These are these used to be the benches where you would sit, and um, there'd be a fold-out table right here. But as you can see, it's just absolutely disgusting. And I'm just kind of assessing everything. I paid forty dollars for this thing, so I'm trying to figure out what is sal salvageable, what's not. And here's my wife and my mom who look utterly disgusted at my decision to spend $40 on his camper. But um, it looks like I pulled a trash can up to start chucking stuff into it and there's a shop vac. So at this point, I probably didn't realize that I needed to gut the whole thing out and clean the whole thing out. But then as I began to see some water damage up here, I started to rip it out and notice that the water damage was just absolutely prolific. And it was kind of opening a can of worms I realized really quickly that not much of this is going to be salvageable. So that's just some of the water damage. So I just start gutting the whole thing at this point. I'm just like, you know, go hog wild gutting it and have my shop back there. At this point, I get it. Um, uh, I get it moved over to my home now, and this is parked in my driveway. And I go ahead and spray paint the the tongue of the camper with some. Uh, some Rust-Oleum spray paint, you know, get rid of the rust and stuff. And uh, you know, my neighbors, I'm sure, were very happy that I had this parked in my driveway. But I kind of, I think I did a pressure washing. I think I pressure washed the outside to get it ready for painting. So I was like, you know, I need to stop gutting the inside of this thing and just get it ready for painting because my neighbors are gonna probably slash my tires if I leave this ugly thing in my driveway much longer. So I spray painted the, uh, the step there, and here's the door. It's missing like pretty much all the windows. It's just screen at this point. And this is missing a window panel, a glass panel, and I start gutting the whole thing out. And there's no lights or anything in here, so I just hung some Christmas lights in to give me some light as I worked at night, because I would work um, all day on this and all night just gutting it down to the actual wood frame. Had these one by two, almost like furring strips as a frame. And up here you can see these are the actual like trusses that go across. So I'm still trying to assess what is salvageable and what's not. I'm just kind of going through and gutting it um, and stripping it down. And this was this was the easy part. Um, and you can see that here there's some water that was coming in through this little the little light here. The, the seal had dry rotted off, so water every time it rained was dripping down this back wall. It was just a mess. See, there's some water damage coming in there. Um, it's it's hard because they build these things uh, to be like homes, but they also build them where they can withstand like hurricane uh, force winds and rain. Every time you drive it on the interstate in a rainstorm, you're like basically driving it through a hurricane. And uh, it's hard to design and, and engineer something like that where you have something that's livable and comfortable, but also something that is um, that's that's basically tornado and hurricane proof every time you take it on a trip so uh, they don't they're not made to last these campers aren't and especially when they build them with wood they're just not made to last probably the worst investment you can make if you buy one new 
or uh, almost new, other than buying a car, it's probably a very bad investment. It just depreciates very quickly. Unless you decide to live in it, you know, full time, you might actually get your money out of it. But in this case, I bought a really junky one, put forty dollars buying it, and uh, and then did a lot of work fixing it up. So me, this is me. I found a, a nest of um, bull ants here, living in here, uh, a bunch of bull ants, and this is me using the spray to kill them all. So it's just piling it all up. This is stuff, a tub of stuff that I found as I was getting it out. So I found some interesting stuff. Uh, cups and a lantern. Um, these were actually pretty cool with this lantern and this thing. I actually fixed them up and still have them as decor in my home right now. I just thought they were really cool from like the 1970s and, you know, I don't know. So this is where the water and stuff used to come in. It's an old drain line. Um, yeah, so here's the floor. Once I started ripping up these peel and stick tiles, you could see all the way down to the ground through the floor. That's because water used to come in right here and it would rot the floor away. So, uh, that's the, taking some more artistic photos here for some reason. That's my, that's my driveway. That's what it looked like parked in my driveway. It was there for, I don't know, five, six months, just like that as I worked on it in my free time. Oh, I found Zelda, Nintendo 64 Zelda while I was getting it out. You know, little treasures like that worth 40 bucks right there. No, I'm just kidding. Not really. But here I painted it white with just, uh, some kills. As you can see down there, just some kills and just to cover up a lot of the stains and stuff. And later on, I'll actually put up, uh, you know, kind of put some designs on it. So I'm like painting and gutting at the same time, it looks like, or maybe my wife is painting. And I'm just gutting this thing out, you know, just going to, going to town on it. Getting it down to the metal frame, basically. So I'm realizing that none of this is salvageable. And I'm like, oh man, what did I get myself into here? So I, just, I would fill up my trash can uh, once a week. And so this window is completely not there. This window's busted out. I would just fill up my trash can once a week, and you know, when they come and haul it away, I'd fill it up again. And did that over and over and over. I didn't get like a big rented dumpster or anything like that. This is my older brother. He's he's helping me out. Um, as you can see, the floor is just completely severed from the shell of the camper there. Um, probably from backing it into something or whatever. It's just a mess. So we're just stripping the whole thing down and starting with a clean slate here. Here he is prying some uh, some rotted wood off, and uh, we're just kind of chewing the floor away, getting it down to the metal frame. Here's what the metal frame looks like. I'm taking a skill saw, and it actually had like three quarter inch, uh, maybe like OSB as a floor with peel and stick tiles. So I was just like, you know what? We're not gonna we're not gonna do this. So I, what I did is I marked where the frame was at, and I just sawed around the frame basically, and avoided the frame with my saw, and um, Got it down to the metal frame. That way I didn't have to peel up all the peel and stick tiles. And it, yeah, it trashed my blade and stuff, but I don't care. And uh, here's a trash can filled up. So I'm sure the garbage men were really happy about that. That's me working at night there. Still gutting it down and cleaning everything. So I got I got it down to... Um, oh, let me back. I got it down just to the metal frame. And what I did is I just took 3 quarter inch plywood. I think it took... Uh, Three sheets total of eight by twelve. Or I'm sorry, um, four by eight, three quarter inch pressure treated plywood, really heavy duty stuff, and I just made it fit with three sheets. Um, I did I did two up front and one at the back. It made this thing so much stronger and um, sturdier. It didn't like wobble when you actually walked in there once you bolt that stuff down. I did tar paper along the bottom. Oh, here's my here's my uh, to do list. And uh, so I just wrote it there on the wall and I'd use it every day as I worked on it. I worked on it a couple hours a day, basically, after I got off work. Did my shopping, my Lowe's list there. Here's my eldest son. His name is Noah. And you've probably seen him in some of the videos. He's now almost 10 years old. But he's out there helping me out, learning some, learning some stuff with the hammer. There's me and Noah working on... Uh, attaching the floor and uh, yeah so here's my typical setup after work was at a trailer with lumber in it and some saw horses and a skill saw really I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> look at like that was like uh, I don't know seven years ago and I've learned so much more about carpentry about handyman stuff plumbing electrical stuff I have learned so much in just that five to seven year span these are the literally all the tools I had to to do this project and get it looking good was uh, I had a skill saw 
um, I had that that Black and Decker piece of junk uh, battery powered drill, and you know hammer and pry bar, and that was basically it. I did this job with those tools, and um, I really. I really have very little knowledge about carpentry and everything else. So you're going to look at some of this and you're like, whoa, what was he doing? And those are my thoughts exactly, don't worry. And uh, here's the frame, here's the shocks. Uh, really rusted, but still I just greased them up and they seem to work fine. Um, put some fresh grease in them. So I'm bolting, I'm bolting the floor to the actual, uh, the actual frame beneath it and caulking along the sides and stuff to keep the water from washing up in there so this is what it looks like in front of the front of the doorway now a lot better a lot more secure so I'm getting the floor almost done oh it looks like the floor is done here so I did the back the back took like one whole sheet and so it looks nice and clean I was able to salvage some of the framing um, so it's it's looking a lot better at this point and I'm getting more optimistic this is kind of like in the rebuilding phase now after I've demoed everything out so what I gotta go do now is like reattach the whole shell along the outside to the actual floor, and um, kind of figuring out. That's my wife waiting for us to go out to eat. I'm sure, and she's like, "Please stop working on this stupid thing," and um, she's like, "Are you gonna come to the car now?" So uh, yeah, she's definitely disgusted with me at that point. She's like, "Please, let's go." So. Um, uh, that's showing some lag bolts that I put through to attach the floor, and uh, that's the trash under this thing. Yeah, if if I were to do different, I'd probably rent like one of those dumpsters and have them come pick it up. These are some um, some roofing screws that I use to reattach the actual metal frame to, or the metal the metal um, shell to the floor, and I just kind of went along the outside the whole way and just reattached it with those rubber washer. Those like it's like metal roofing screws basically, and um, they're not cheap, but they, they do a good job. And they kind of pulled everything in and kind of sucked it all back into the floor. And um, this is me putting some pressure treated. I use nothing but pressure treated lumber on this, which probably wasn't the best idea if you're going to be in a really confined space looking back because pressure treated lumber has a lot of smells and chemicals. So, um, But I think I was just really scared of like water damage and stuff. And yeah, so that's my friend Austin. Uh, he would come over in the mornings after he'd get off work at Starbucks and he would... Um, he would help me out with this thing. I really appreciate all his help. See, so like this is us using like a handsaw to saw a two by four, and um, now I have like nice tools. I have like a chop saw and stuff. So this is what we had to work with. And it's us kind of rebuilding the front of it. These are just a tub of tools that I was using. Gives you an idea. <laughs> and uh, it's Austin. And we're kind of just figuring out how to rebuild. I knew nothing about framing and stuff like that, like I, like I do now. I really knew very little. It's my dog waiting for us to throw a tennis ball. See the tennis ball right there? We would throw a tennis ball and work some, throw a tennis ball and work some, just give her some exercise. So um, still just kind of building the inside. So what I did is I took one by two, pressure treated one by twos, and actually reattached them uh, to kind of build out that framing. What I wish I had done was, before I rip these out, take a sharpie and trace where they were. That would have been really smart. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of putting these in place here and reattaching, reattaching them to the existing frame. And uh, it's going pretty well. Let's see. Looks like I'm building. Looks like I'm building the bunk bed here. And these are the, the metal um, roofing screws that I put along the front to keep the water from splashing up in there. So uh, I'm trying to rebuild the roof now and some of the beams that went across. And you you kind of see it sagging down there in the middle. And it's just because it's like, you know, just floppy metal, basically. It's just sagging down. And that's not good. You want it to, you want it to be, you know, str like pretty, pretty straight across so the water doesn't pool up in there. And, um, yeah, so, oh, okay, so we fast-forwarded quite a bit here. Um, I must have got tired of pic taking pictures. So here's the front benches. I rebuilt these benches here, and I built little shelves in here. So the idea is that we would sit at these benches 
and be able to eat food and there'd be like a table right here. And then also I had this mattress that I would put across and make it a bed as well. And you can use this for storage down in here. So that was kind of the, the oh, and I used um, uh, Luan to, uh, sheets of Luan, like plywood to uh, be my walls. I built a little shelf in here. So if you're laying in the bottom bunk, um, you can use this for like little storage, like for cell phones and stuff like that. This is a top bunk that I'm building. And this is like, basically, this is, um, I forget what they call it. It's like white plastic, uh, like shower board, uh, if that's what they call it. It's like just waterproof shower board. This was like really floppy and hard to actually get up there and nail up there. I had to have like three people help me do this and it didn't actually turn out that well. So I would not have done that again. Use that shower board. I would use something more rigid and, um, I don't know. I didn't really, again, I didn't really know what I was doing a whole lot in this, but um, for $40 and everything else, it, it wasn't bad. So here's Noah up here in the top bunk. This was, he's excited about his bed being built. And uh, this is the front bench, me kind of doing the roofing around. So I just used a piece of plywood as the bed here, and plywood up here for this bed. And we'll put mattresses in there, as you'll see here. So I'm boxing in the tire wells, um, and I, was, I found this on the side of the road, and I was like, huh, I wonder if it would fit in here. And I ended up not leaving it in there. I ended up putting a mini fridge there instead, I believe. But it's coming along. It's getting there. I had to cover up the, uh, the roof vent with that shower board because I had to actually gut the whole roof vent out and get rid of it, I believe. So rain was coming in there, so I had to, I had to cover that up. I'm trying to rebuild the door now um, using these 1x2s, and I didn't do a very good job of rebuilding the door, but it worked. I just didn't really know what I was doing. But um, So I got, I got a ladder built. The ladder Noah would use that ladder, and he'd go up. And I also have a little sink, the beginnings of a sink here uh, put in. It's coming along. It's getting there. Let me keep going here. So I'm painting the inside for some reason. Painting it kind of a gray and then have a red accent wall back there. I don't know what this is though. This might be insulation. Not sure. So here it is hooked up. Oh, I'm thinking I'm, I think I'm hooking it up to take it to the scrap yard. Uh, not to scrap it for money. That's not what I'm doing, but I'm going to get it weighed so that I can get a, a title and a tag for it. I had to actually do a homemade t uh, title for this because it, it um, I registered it as a homemade trailer uh, because the title, the original title was lost and they had no problem with that. Um, it might have cost extra, I'm not sure, but I got a tag and a title for it, you just have to weigh it. I don't forget what I weighed, I mean it might have been like 600 pounds or something like that. But here's me painting the front, it's turning out kind of nice. I just left the bare metal right here, you can see the metal, I thought that looked cool. And, um, oh, I've got a new window. I went to, like, a mobile home supply store and got a new window and just popped it in there. I wish I had done all the windows like that. This was, like, I don't know, a $50 window. But it looked really nice once I popped it in there and replaced that front window. So here's our cat, one of our cats, um, who's no longer with us, RIP. And um, so I put a padlock on there. Just really simple, um, except I realized that, you know, you could, like, people could lock you in there. So... Oh, okay, so this is um this is like astroturf rug that I just basically like cut down to size and I didn't glue it I didn't like do anything with it it's just like a rug that I bought at Lowe's it's an outdoor rug so the idea was that I could like at the end of a camping trip I could roll it up in here and then take it out and just shake it out because all the sand or whatever would get into it and it worked pretty well except that it kind of slid around a little bit as you walk sometimes it would like slide and like bunch up but it worked pretty well other than that it smelled good and it looked nice um. It was cheap. It was like fifteen dollars for all that rug, all that carpet. So I I did like curtains around here just to kind of cover up the storage beneath here, and under the bed. And uh... oh oh yeah, <laughs> that scared me. Uh, that's a dummy that I had, and I would play pranks with this dummy. But apparently he decided to sleep up in there, so I would hide him places and freak out all my family. So this is Noah waking up in the morning having breakfast in the camper. It's getting, you know, hey, when your camper gets good enough that way you can like eat in it without vomiting because of the smells, then you're doing good. You're in good shape. 
So this is me hooking it up again. Um, I'm not sure why. Oh, no, this is me at the scrapyard. Okay, so I'm taking it to the scrapyard to get it weighed. And um, you, you have to roll over the scale, basically, and they weigh it for you. So uh, maybe I should have cashed it in at that point for money. No, I shouldn't have. So I'll tell you after this video is over how much I spent total on this camper and what I sold it for. So I kept it maybe six months to a year, I'm not sure. We used it several times. So this is me getting fancy, and putting some decor and stuff in here. Got a mini fridge going on, a coffee maker. I got the lantern hung back up, some water. I think we're getting ready for a camping trip. Maybe our first trip at this point. Oh, so this is how I would... What am I doing here? Oh, maybe I'm putting new tires on it. Um, putting new tires on And then this is um, an extension cord that would actually run into the camper. And that's how I plugged it in and got electricity. So I just used like power strips and stuff throughout the whole camper. It's so small I could get away with doing that. And... Um, so, oh, okay, so I painted a, like, retro stripe across here, and this is me chilling. I flip-flops. And that's Angela. If you've seen any of our tiny house videos, you know who Angela is, and she's getting ready for our first camping trip. She's saying bye to us. I think we're hooking up and ready to go for a camping trip here. So we went to St. Augustine, Florida, and uh, this is us um, parked along the beach. This is A1A. I was born not far from here. And this is Noah checking out the camper. We're about to walk down to the beach. This is really cool. You can just pull off on the side of the road. You can take a nap, you know, make some lunch. You got everything you need right here. I don't have a bathroom in here, which um, it did when I bought it, but I didn't I didn't rebuild it with the bathroom. So it's basically just kind of like sleeping quarters. Um, bathroom would have just taken up too much space, but it's all good. Uh, here we are maybe at a rest area or a truck stop. I'm just taking pictures. Okay, so here we get to... Um, this is Anastasia Island State Park. This is our first camping trip in our new camper, and um, we're excited. We're getting out. Uh, this is when we just had one boy, and we could get away with living in a camper this small for a weekend. And uh, yeah, so this is me just taking some pictures of what it looked like. Okay, so this is the finished product. This is before we put like bed sheets on the bed, and um, you know this is this is basically the finished product. So um, this is my wife and I's bed down here, and this is Noah's bed up there. And that's what it looked like along the front there. So it kind of gives you an idea of what it looked like when it was all said and done. And mini fridge set up. Oh, and there we go back at the beginning. So that was, here I'll take you back inside. Ooh, that was the inside. So we went from this to, you know, this right here. Much, much better. And it just was nice. It smelled nice. I bleached the metal walls down when I stripped it all down and stuff. And um, so I paid $40 for the camper. Um, I paid maybe $100 to get it like titled and tagged and stuff. And, um, you know, all total, I probably have around $250 to $300 in this camper. And what did I do with it? I kept it about six months to a year. We used it several times for camping and little trips like this. And... Um, just spent a lot of time in it. And then we traded it for another camper that was about the same size and didn't need nearly as much work as this one did. And it was a nicer, newer camper. And I um, I didn't have, I guess I didn't have the energy for fixing it up. I listed it on Craigslist and I sold it for $600. So, you know, I, I spent maybe $300 total, at the most 400 we used it several times, and I sold this. Essentially, got six hundred dollars back out of it. So I made money on this on this deal, and um, and that's without really knowing what I was doing. So if you're looking for you know like a part time hobby that you can make some money, yeah, definitely find some old campers like this on Craigslist or wherever, and you know you maybe you can find inspiration in this video. But I really appreciate you guys watching, and this is what it's all about: getting out with your family and and just making memories with your family going camping, taking them outside, and, and just spending time together. And whatever it takes to, to enable you to do that, it's well worth it. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and that is all. See you next time.